Hi, I'm Candace Berkeley, Development Coordinator for Life Science at Carolina Biological Supply Company. Today I'm going to demonstrate and discuss the process of the Winkler method to test for dissolved oxygen and water samples using Lamotte's Dissolved Oxygen Kit. The Winkler method is a technique used to measure the concentration of dissolved oxygen in freshwater environments. Dissolved oxygen content in aquatic systems is critical to the water's ability to support life and is also an indicator of the health of the system. Instead of using a test tablet, this technique allows students to gain hands-on experience fixing samples on site and performing titrations. There are two main parts to the Winkler Method protocol. The first is a series of steps designed to fix the amount of oxygen in your sample so that the addition of more oxygen doesn't skew your results. During the second part of the protocol, we will conduct a titration to measure the amount of dissolved oxygen in your original sample. We recommend the use of proper safety equipment during this procedure, including gloves and goggles. If you don't have access to an outside water source, you can always use an aquarium or fish tank that has been previously set up in your lab. Before oxygen fixation, you must fill the DO bottle with a water sample. To do this, tilt the DO bottle to a 45 degree angle and slowly submerge the bottle into the freshwater system. Water should slowly flow into the DO bottle. When almost full, allow the bottle to be completely submerged in the water. Cap the bottle while submerged, ensuring there are no air bubbles in the bottle or cap. If necessary, uncap and gently tilt the bottle to release any trapped air. Carefully remove the bottle from the water, and now you're ready to begin oxygen fixation. The first step in oxygen fixation is the addition of manganese sulfate and alkaline potassium iodide azide to the sample. Uncap the DO bottle and add 8 drops of manganese sulfate and 8 drops of alkaline potassium iodide azide to the bottle. Note that the bottle will overflow as you add additional solutions, so you may wish to keep paper towels on hand. Cap the bottle and mix by inverting the sample. Manganese sulfate and potassium hydroxide react to form manganese hydroxide, which appears as a white precipitate. Allow the precipitate to settle to the shoulder of the bottle before proceeding. Once settled, add 8 drops of sulfuric acid to the bottle. Cap and mix until the precipitate is completely dissolved. Sulfuric acid reacts with the precipitate, manganese hydroxide, to form manganic sulfamate. This product oxidizes the iodide from the alkaline potassium iodide azide solution to free iodine, manganese sulfamate, and potassium sulfamate. The free iodine turns the solution a yellow-gold color. The addition of the sulfuric acid also neutralizes any remaining potassium hydroxide and manganese hydroxide in the solution, preventing it from reacting with any additional oxygen introduced into the sample. This fixes the reaction and any additional oxygen will not affect the results of the titration. The final step in the Winkler Method protocol is the titration of free iodine with sodium thiosulfate. Uncap the DO bottle and use the fixed solution to fill a titration sampling vial to the 20 milliliter line. Fill a titration syringe with 1 milliliter of sodium thiosulfate and insert the syringe into the hole on the sampling vial lid. Add one drop of sodium thiosulfate at a time to the sample, swirling between each drop until the sample becomes light yellow or about the color of a post-it note. For better color determination, Hold up a white piece of paper behind the titration vial. Once light yellow, remove the titration syringe and the cap together without disturbing the syringe and add eight drops of starch indicator solution. In the presence of the starch indicator solution, free iodine causes the solution to turn blue, as you see. As we continue the titration, sodium thiosulfate in the syringe reacts with the free iodine to convert it to sodium iodide. Sodium iodide does not react with the starch indicator solution, so the solution will turn clear once all the free iodine is converted. Replace the lid and continue the titration as before, gently swirling between each drop. If the blue color remains after the addition of an entire syringe, refill the syringe and continue. Keep track of how much sodium thiosulfate you add. Once the blue color disappears, record the total amount of sodium thiosulfate it took to convert the free iodine to sodium iodide. The amount of free iodine in the sample is proportional to the initial dissolved oxygen level, 
so the amount of sodium thiosulfate needed to titrate it reveals the original dissolved oxygen concentration. Each tenth of a milliliter of sodium thiosulfate used in the titration indicates one part per million dissolved oxygen or one milligram of dissolved oxygen per liter of water. For example, I added 1.4 milliliters of sodium thiosulfate, therefore there were 14 parts per million or milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen in my sample. Whether performing the Winkler method in class or during field collection, try using Lamotte's dissolved oxygen kit and gain the hands-on experience of measuring dissolved oxygen concentration through oxygen fixation and titration. For more information on our water quality testing supplies, come visit us at www.carolina.com.